Okay, so thanks for joining me today as uh, I go over some really great options for using your oils for do-it-yourself. Um, now, there are so many different DIY uh, opportunities available for essential oils. I can't possibly go over all of them, and I'm not going to go into depth with a lot of different recipes and things. Um, there are going to be a few that I'll give you some examples for, but basically this is to kind of give you a bit of an understanding of how versatile your oils are um, and being able to utilize them in everyday situations um, and also cut your costs out with a lot of the things that you would normally pay a lot of money for it can literally save you a lot of money by using your oils and making things yourself so let's get started so we're going to look at um, what essential oils are for those that i'm assuming a lot of you that are coming along will know what essential oils are but i'm going to cover the basics anyway for those who may watch this delaying stage I'm going to talk about why doTERRA is different, how you can use the essential oils with some DIY ideas for at home, and then for those who are interested, how you can purchase them as well. So, so an essential oil is a natural medicinal aromatic compound that's found in multiple parts of plants. And that can be from the seeds, the bark, the roots, the flowers, the stems, the resin, um, heaps and heaps of different areas that it can come from. And all plants have a certain type of essential oil in them. Um, and they are often used as the immune system for the plant. So it helps them to fight off things like molds and funguses and viruses and bacteria, etc. environmental threats, um, things that change with the seasons, bugs, all that kind of stuff. And they actually use the essential oils in the plant to support themselves. So because it's a natural compound, our body understands how to actually use the essential oils and we can utilize them for our own benefits, which is really amazing. So um, let's think about an, an orange, for example, in that rind of an orange, you have got the essential oils, which is what we um, access to get them in the little bottle. Um, and that's like the, the protective layer for the, orange, the oranges. And so we can kind of make some different choices with what we do to help to protect ourselves from maybe environmental things or things that are coming on like coming inside putting on some warmer clothes um, having some things that help boost our immune system a plant has to rely on its um, essential oils and the compounds that they help to protect them with so we can actually get those benefits in those little bottles of it's like having the immune system of the plant bottled up for us so we can access all those benefits here and that's a really powerful thing. And because it's, it's natural and our body understands it, you're not gonna get side effects that often come with the synthetic version of um, the, the benefits the plant have. So a lot of the modern medicine these days is actually made from similar properties in essential oils that have been synthesized and uh, made synthetic um, so that they can have this patented um, approach to uh, looking after us. And our body often has side effects to those, whatever that may be. You don't tend to get that with essential oils. You can have different responses to the oils and that's really important to understand um, and be aware of what your body's doing when it's coming to contact. So we well, can use the essential oils for all sorts of things. You need to be aware that one drop of an essential oil is extremely potent. So if you took one drop of peppermint, it could make you 28 cups of peppermint tea. So when you are using them, it is important to do small applications or small uses frequently rather than using large high amounts um, at a, a less frequent occurrence. It's really important to remember that with oils that it is very much a, a consistency in the use rather than just using in a reactive way. You're going to get a much better uh, response with the oils when they're used consistently. So why would we use essential oils? There's so many different ways that they can use them and there's a whole stack of physical things that um, you can see above here that are gonna to help to support your body. But we've also got a lot of the other things that they can support us with too. They're gonna to reduce the toxic uh, exposure that we've got. So ways that you, you can cut out a lot of the toxins and we'll talk about some of the cleaning ways that you can use them and cut out those toxins and um, like spa products and things like that and with your kids. So there's lots of ways that you can cut out toxins by introducing essential oils. They are so cheap. They're literally one drop of, I haven't got peppermint here, one drop of lemon, lemon essential oil is going to cost you five cents. 
and there's 250 drops in this bottle. So that's 250 times that that oil is going to be able to support you for whatever it is that you're going to be using it for. So the value in there with the actual cost involved with this is minuscule, but it's also going to save you money when you look at these DIY type opportunities of not having to go and buy other things if you want to make them yourself. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. I love the idea of DIY and I do DIY, but I also like the fact that I don't have to always do DIY by being able to get some of the other um, products that doTERRA already make that have the oils in them. Now, they're safe for using for the whole family. They become empowering as well. You start to think, you know what? I can actually make my own cleaning spray or I can make my own baby wipes. It, or I've got something that I can use for my family that will help to support our immune system. So it gives us back a lot of power in our everyday lives by having essential oils. So why doTERRA? And this is one of the big things uh, in my mind from my understanding now of all the, the research I've done with essential oils. It's the quality. The quality of the essential oil that you're using is going to determine the outcome that you have and also the effectiveness of the product as well. So the difference with doTERRA is they have what is called CPTG, quality oils. Now this is a trademark that doTERRA has actually created for themselves because in the essential oil industry, there are no regulations. So a bottle of essential oil that you might purchase from somewhere that says 100% pure essential oil doesn't actually need to have any essential oil in there to say that. In Australia, it's 3% of essential oil needs to be in a bottle that's labeled 100% pure. If you're like me, that is not, and you think that's not good enough, you need to make sure that you're using uh, a, a product that has transparency. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the highest quality oil. So with doTERRA, the plants are actually harvested where they thrive. Now, this means that you're getting a better quality plant that is in optimal conditions to give you the best quality essential oil. So you also want to make sure that every um, essential oil that you're using is undergoing third party tests. So not just testing themselves. doTERRA has multiple third party tests that every single batch of oil will go through to make sure that there's no traces of heavy metals, pesticides, that there's no synthetics, um, that this, this oil that you're purchasing is actually oil and not some synthetic um, copy that they're trying to, to sell to you. Um, it's going to be genuine. It's going to be potent. Um, that's when you're going to get that one drop being the equivalent of 28 cups of peppermint tea when you've got the testing to back that up. Um, it's beyond organic. Now, that actually means that when you look at organic and how they're labelled, often that only needs to be 98% organic and sometimes that's questionable as well and some of the tests that go on to to say that a product is organic is not regular so it's not every single time that that product has come out they'll, they'll come and do testing every six months or three months or whatever it is for that particular um, product and not every single uh, product that's taken out is actually tested with doTERRA that is different every single batch of oil is tested and you can actually have a look at their website, which is called source to you.com. And on the bottom of every bottle, you probably can't see that, is a batch number. And if your bottle is after, I think it's June, uh, September last year, you can go and type in that batch number into source to you and it will give you the tests that were done on that batch of oil. So this is complete transparency that you're getting from doTERRA. And that for me gives me a lot of comfort to know that they're not hiding anything. So the other part of doTERRA is um, their philanthropic side and how they're using their oils to help make a difference in the world. So not only do they source their oils from multiple places where they thrive, they're sourcing them from locations and countries that are very underprivileged and they've got what's called co-impact sourcing, which helps to support communities to live a better life. Um, they're helping the, to empower them they're helping them to provide for their families, which in ways they were struggling before. Um, they're working together to create a sustainable opportunity for the farmers, but also the whole community. And doTERRA is going in and changing lives. And I want to be part of something that does actually make a difference. So when I buy my bottle of vetiver, I know that a family in Haiti can put food on the table or they can buy clothes. And I know that this is a sustainable thing and it's making a real difference. 
doTERRA also has some really great organizations that they're a part of and they have an amazing foundation called Healing Hands Foundation where they give back into um, a lot of really amazing um, causes. And doTERRA covers all the organizational costs of Healing Hands. So any donations that are made by wellness advocates are going straight into that, um, that area that you want to help support. So for me, doTERRA is not just about the oils, it's actually about the bigger picture, the integrity of the company, and also the impact that they're having on the world. And I want to know that I'm making a difference when I'm choosing to use these amazing oils. So you can use the oils three ways. So there's aromatically, topically, and internally. So aromatically is basically smelling, um, and you can use that with a diffuser. You can use that um, smelling just from the bottle. When you're cleaning and doing things like that, you're going to get the aromatic benefit of the oils. And when you're making these DIY things, that's a big part of um, the benefits of the oils. So you're going to be able to get those, those calming, soothing, uplifting, whatever properties or oils that you're using, when you take them in um, aromatically, breathing them in. Then you've also got in, uh, topically. So topically is when you're applying it to your skin and your skin is your biggest organ. So anything that you apply to your skin will get into your uh, bloodstream within about 30 seconds. So that's something to really consider if you are wanting to cut down the toxins in your life. If, if you're putting products that you don't know what are in there onto your skin, how is that affecting you, your children, your animals, the environment? Um, you want to make sure that you are doing the best that you can to provide a really good, clean option for you and your family. So topically, can it be applied to certain areas that are sore? Um, the bottom of your feet is really good because it helps to absorb the oils in uh, with less chance of skin sensitivities because the skin on your feet is a lot thicker. And there's reflexology points too on the bottom of your feet that are also going to help to um, support your body in different areas uh, opposed to your actual feet. Now, the way that you can use your oils is internally. Now, I haven't gone into you know, cooking and, and ways that you can make treats and things with the oils, but this is one way that can nourish your body through um, taking the oils internally. When I'm talking about internally, this is specific to doTERRA oils. When you have other oils and I say, you know, lemon is great to take as a, um, a way to help detox your body when you take it in water. Please don't use another lemon. <laughs> if you have a lemon at home, um, please just use doTERRA ones when it's, we're talking about internally um, because I want to make sure that you're using safe options as well. So those are the three ways. And I'm not going to go into great detail about those today, but there are ways that you can create your own things, <laughs> DIY um, alternatives that are going to encompass all these three ways as well. So let's start talking about how you can incorporate the oils in to your life in a DIY way. So one of the main things people often ask about is cleaning. And to be honest, this is one of the simplest ways to get started with using your oils in a DIY uh, fashion. So there's really not a lot of extra things that you need in your home. You don't need to be buying expensive chemicals. You don't need to be um, filling your lungs with the horrible fumes and you know, having your children and your pets walk along floors that have been mopped with toxic chemicals. You need some basics. So we've got essential oils, obviously. Baking soda is normally in most cupboards. Castile soap. So that is, a, it's a soap that's made up of multiple oils. It's amazing product that can help nourish your skin on its own with the ingredients in there. Vinegar. White vinegar is phenomenal. It's got, it's got so many different uses to it. And then we've got borax as well. So this is something that you can find um, in uh, what they called places that you know, hardware stores, uh, and some of the the supermarkets may have them as well. So that that is something that you can also use as a, an alternative to help with your cleaning. So these are really basic, simple options that we often have in our cupboard anyway. Why don't we use them? We've just forgotten how to actually utilize a lot of the resources that we've got available to us anyway, that we've already spent money on that are actually very low cost items. And you can utilize them by adding some essential oils that are also low cost. So let's look at some of the options that we've got. Now, like I said at the start, I cannot go through every single <laughs> option that you've got for DIY. So part of this is actually to give you a bit of a, an awakening to maybe there's a way that I can make this with essential oils. So some of these things that will come up here, I'm not going to give you all the 
um, recipes. There are recipes and I'll show you how to do some of them. But this is to go, oh, okay, maybe I could make my own. I can give it a try and see if that's something that you want to do on a regular basis or just try it one off. And sometimes I'm of the, I like the idea of DIY, like I've said, but sometimes I'm just, I'd rather just know that I can do it if I ever need to. Um, but it is also good to know that you can have these things available to you in a very easy to access way when the, the ingredients are normally what you've got in your house. So um, we've got all sorts of options here and these are just a very small few of the cleaning options and I will go through a couple with you. So a lot of people ask about a laundry detergent. <coughs> so this one is a really great one if you're wanting to make a powder. doTERRA has a fantastic one with the on guard liquid uh, laundry detergent and it has like 66 washes and it ends up costing you like cents per wash and it actually cleans them really well. But if you want to have something that you've created yourself, this is really simple. You just make this up in a, a food processor just so that you can blend in those, those chunks of soap into the, um, the borax and the baking soda. So what that's actually going to do is really wash those, the clothes with multiple um, ingredients. So you've got borax, washing soda that you can just get from your supermarkets. You've probably never seen it before because I never had when I went looking for it. Um, baking soda, again, that should be in your kitchen. And then just some bars of soap. And um, a lot of people have heard of like sunlight soap. Try and get ones that are just cheap, basic soap that don't have a lot of other ingredients or um, uh, aromas or fragrances in there. Anytime it says fragrance, it is going to be uh, an issue to your, your system. It's going to affect your endocrine system. So fragrances and perfumes are actually no no. So this is basically blending together and you can um, blending this all up. So you grate the soap first and then you will um, mix up the, the borax, the washing soda and the baking soda. And you put a little bit of the soap, uh, the dried ingredients in with the, um, what is it, the blender and mix that in so that the soap doesn't get clogged onto the actual blade. So you're putting some of that dry in there and then you add more in and mix it around. You can do all sorts of different options for the essential oils that you use. Lemon is a great um, a stain remover. So you can even just put lemon directly onto a stain before you wash it. So lemon and wild orange is a great combination if you want that really fresh citrusy kind of smell. You might want to do lime. Um, you could do eucalyptus. But with this, you can actually mix and match it yourself. You might even just want to put have this washing powder unscented and add your oils to each wash. So that's another way that you can utilize this. So um, this is a really easy, simple way and you just store it in a big um, airtight container and use it. And it's like one to two tablespoons for each load. So it's not, you're not using a great deal of it either. So these are great and I'm actually going, I've got a bit of a walkthrough of how to make um, the baby wipes. So it's very similar to this when we make baby wipes, but cleaning wipes, if, if you're going through wipes or hand wipes or things like that that you're purchasing, it is so simple to make it yourself. My tip is to use the highest quality um, paper towel that you can because you want it to stay together. But this is gonna cost you hardly anything. You're utilizing the OnGuard cleaning concentrate, which is phenomenal for cleaning, and I tend to alternate between that and DIY type options. Um, and you're literally just sitting a paper towel with some water, vinegar, and some on-guard concentrate. And then as you pull the insert out of the paper towel, you've got individual wipes that you can use. And it's as simple as that. There's no extra chemicals in there that are going to be an issue. You can make your own dish soap. Now, the photo probably is a little bit misleading because often when you're making your own uh, soaps, especially when you're using Castile soap, they're not going to sun up a lot like what you may be used to because we're not using sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate and they are in those products to make them foam. We've been conditioned to believe that shampoos, um, bubble baths, or bubble baths obviously are supposed to bubble a little bit, um, but these, when we're washing our dishes, that we need to have a full sink full of soap and big bubbles to actually be cleaning. And I know that he's not going to listen. My husband is one that does this as well. He'll fill the sink till there's like half bubbles and 
water underneath and you can't even see what you're cleaning anyway. But that is a disillusion for what you're, it's not actually showing you how you're cleaning. It's, it's there to make you think you are because you've got bubbles. So this may not be as bubbly as you expect when you make it, but it's still gonna help with cleaning. So a DIY surface spray. So I have um, my own, and this is one option that you can use. You can make it with um, these oils because they've all got properties in there that are gonna help with cutting through all those nasty germs and things that are on the, the benches, um, anywhere that's going around. You can just use, um, what's it called, uh, On Guard, and that can actually help you um, to, to give you an overall cleaning ability in just using on guard in the water. I'm going to show you how simple it is and hopefully give you a little bit of a tip and I'm hoping you'll be able to see. This is this is a tip. So this is the foaming hand wash. I'm going to show you how to make the foaming hand wash in a minute that doTERRA actually sells that you can refill their bottles for. And it comes in this awesome um, safe plastic container. Never throw these out because you can reuse these and make your own cleaning sprays. Cleaning sprays, room sprays, spritzes, anything, you can reuse them. You can even store different um, things in here ready to go that you can just transfer over so that they're ready. So all I do is take the label off. So I've taken the label off here. And I have got one of these um, spray tops. So you can, you can repurpose one from a previous spray that you've got, just to make sure that it's gonna fit in there. And then I have, I'm gonna put um, a label on the top and you can use the, um, the dots that you get with your oils. And all we're gonna do, so this one is lemon. So we've got 10 in there. I'm gonna use frankincense. I'm actually gonna make this a tea tree lemon and on guard one. I'm just putting my drops in there. Now what I sometimes do is actually add the cleaning concentrate in here too. So I've got different, um, I mix and match it all the time. And sometimes I might want to put something extra. I might put some peppermint in here so it gives it a little bit of a, a different aroma. Or I might put some lavender as well. Because they've all got properties in there that are going to help you with cleaning. But they're helping your moods as well. I tend to like a very citrusy <laughs> type spray when I'm cleaning because I'm not a big fan of cleaning and it makes me feel better about doing it. So I've put On Guard on in there and I'm gonna put some tea tree in as well. Tea tree comes out a lot quicker. And when you're using water in here, ideally you wanna use distilled or boiled water from the kettle. So I've got some of that here. And all we wanna do now is, try not to spill it everywhere. Fill that up, put your lid on, and I now have, shake it up, you can shake it each time you use it. Um, if you put the cleaning concentrate in there, that helps to disperse the oils a little bit more, but I just shake it every time I use it, and I can tell you, I can smell that um, when it's going, and we can, try not to get it in my eye. It smells fresh, it's got On Guard in there, it's got tea tree, it's got lemon, um, it's gonna help with cleaning those surfaces. And that is as quick and as easy as it is. And one of these will last me <laughs> ages, ages and ages, like months in a lot of cases. And I'm using that to clean the benches. Um, I'll use it to clean in the toilet. I sometimes will make a different one for the toilet. So I've got different sprays around the house. You can get nice labels as well. Um, I like to mix things up. So I'm always trying different things and putting different uh, displays and things on anything that I'm doing. So it's really simple uh, and you're not having to go and spend heaps of money at the, the shops and you're repurposing things. Otherwise get glass bottles. You can reuse another one that you've um, possibly bought before, but I wouldn't use anything that's had chemicals in there because they're probably laden into the, the plastic and you want to avoid that. So this one is actually one of my favorites, the foaming hand wash. Now I love this one from doTERRA. Like, and like I said, sometimes I'm DIY, sometimes I'm not. This morning I filled up half of my pumps around the house with this because I still had some. But now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make your own foaming hand wash. So all you need is a pump, and these, I just reuse the ones that I get from doTERRA. 
and I'm hoping you can see that, kind of. And then what we're gonna put in is Castile soap. So this is the Dr. Bonner's one. And you can get this also through Oils for Life Australia. They have a really great Castile soap, or you can get the Dr. Bonner's one. And we're gonna put in our two tablespoons of Castile soap without spilling. I love it when I've got just enough. Need to reorder. And so that is going to give it that um, ability to help with the cleaning. And so the, the oils and things that are in here, the only thing I hate about this is trying to find stuff because there's so much writing on it. It's got things like um, coconut oil, potassium hydroxide, um, olive oil, hemp oil, jojoba, citric acid. So it's got um, a lot of oils in there. So it's really nourishing for your skin as well. And a lot of the hand soaps that are available, especially if they are um, antibacterial, have what's called tricyclan in them, and that is now not allowed to be put into hand washes because apparently it causes cancer. So we've been using that in our um, hand washes for it's about 10 years it's been used, um, and now they're telling that it's, it's not safe. So I've just got one tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil. Check that in. And then I'm going to fill up with my distilled water. I should probably put my essential oils in. Now, when you do this, make sure you leave enough room at the top for the pump because it will overflow otherwise. So do that. And then we're going to do, like, I really like On Guard and Lemon, but sometimes I will mix it up. So the reason I'm going for a lot of On Guard things at the moment is because it's winter and I want to use the protective uh, benefits of On Guard because it is really supporting to our system. So I'm going to use On Guard and I like adding a bit of lemon in there too. You can, if you don't want to do, you know, On Guard type ones, you can, you can make them citrusy, you can make them lavender, you can do what you like. Make, put some um, Douglas fir in there. The firs are lovely, especially with citrus. If you combine those two together, it makes this beautiful, clean, fresh smell. Give that a bit of a shake. And do I have a cloth here after? Yeah, I've got something. So I just don't want to put it and then not have anything. And then we have a really nice foaming hand wash that smells beautiful. So you've got that lemony wild orange kind of smell. It's actually really nourishing for your hands because it's got those other oils in there. It's not stripping them too. So in these kind of months, I would... I used to get really dry hands because of what I was using. They don't strip the natural oils out of your um, your skin, so you don't get the really dry hands and smell. And they always feel really good afterwards. So that's as simple as it is to make a foaming hand wash. So I I alternate between the two, and sometimes I will put <laughs> excuse me the um, my own smells in there so it's different types of essential oils or i use doTERRA's one and sometimes i'll add extra oils into doTERRA's one as well so you can also make your own floor cleaner and these ones um, combine together so you've got your furs in there and you've got some lemon they give that really fresh smell that often you'll find in a floor cleaner smell so rather than having to utilize something that is probably synthetic to start with and toxic you can add your own drops of oil in literally castile soap Water, essential oils, that's all you need. And they're gonna be helping to clean that floor for you as well. Let's move on to some really fun things that you can do with the kids. And I actually like, like these are kids specific things and using for kids and babies, but I like getting them involved with making this kind of stuff. Helping them to see that, you know, we can make our own things and starting to give them that understanding that you no, know, we don't have to go to the shops all the time to buy our own stuff, let's make it. And it's lots of fun. So we did a, a Mother's Day make and take here um, a couple of weeks ago and we made a sugar scrub, a bath salts and also a roller blend perfume and my kids were helping and they get to enjoy making the process and then giving something that they've made as well. So get them involved with it and start to teach them that it's not all about consumerism and, have consumerism and having to buy what someone is advertising. See how you can create your own, and it's lots of fun. 
So again, there's heaps of ways <laughs> that you can use essential oils and these are not, this is not a limited list again. Um, the aromatherapy Play-Doh is phenomenal. I did a stall at a school yesterday and we had this Play-Doh out there and it smelled amazing. And the kids, it's really great for their sensory skills. So you, stimulation as well. So you can get them making it, but also get them creating with it. And on a side note, when they're using it, they're getting the benefits of the essential oils. So you put in some um, lavender or balance or things like that, you're gonna get the benefits of Karma Child. Thank you later. Uh, so we've got, also got moon sand. This is so easy to make. It is flour, vegetable oil, and essential oils. So you're making the moon sand, but creating an aromatherapy uh, moon sand for it. So it's, it's great for their sensory skills. Um, but again, you're getting them to absorb the, the oils topically, but also in, um, aromatically. So you're getting those benefits into their system. I am not a big fan of having sand everywhere. So this would be an outside plea for me. It's not an inside <laughs> side one for me, but it's also not normal sand as well. Baby wipes. Now I went through a heap of baby wipes with my son, my first child. My second, well, she was about 10 months when we started using essential oils and I didn't really know about the whole make your own baby wipes and I actually thought it was too hard. And for, probably for the last, so she, it's probably been about six months, maybe a bit more since she um, has been, or was it Christmas? So yeah, about just before Christmas, about five or six months that she hasn't been in nappies. So we haven't needed constant baby wipes all the time. And for 12 months before that, I was actually making my own baby wipes and it saves me a ton of money and it's simpler than you would believe. You get high quality paper towel, so I'd use the Viva, that tends to be the, the better one. Cut it in half with a knife, so a serrated bread knife is often the easiest. It's not an ideal feeling or sound, but it, you can get through it. Um, I just don't like it. Then you would put that, um, the half of a roll, I would sometimes make double, so I would spread them out between our um, the, the baby wipes we'd have up at the change table, we'd have some in the bag, we'd have some in the car, etc. So I'd make a double batch every time. So one roll would make a double batch. Um, and I would sit both of them together and double what I was actually putting in there. So you need some warm water, coconut oil again, so fractionated coconut oil, lavender and tea tree. And you need to mix the the fractionated coconut oil and the oils into the water beforehand, or you can drop the, um, the essential oils on after. But I actually found it distributed better when you distribute it in the water. And then just pour it over the top of the, the half cut um, paper towel. Pull out that insert inside, like, and you actually flip over. So, so take that paper towel and turn it over after it's soaked up some, then it allows it to distribute through. It's gonna get through eventually anyway and then it absorbs all that moisture, take the core out, and then pop it into whatever container. So you can use a glass container like this picture, but we were using a leftover, like it was a Huggies one that I never actually used those wipes, that I was just putting the oil, the wipes in there, and they work really well. And I found that because they, um, there was the high quality ones, they had a bit of texture with the, the wipes, and so it was getting a lot of stuff off that the store-bought ones weren't previously, uh, and they smell great. I would actually always add frankincense into my mix as well. So I'd add three drops of frankincense. It's up to you, when you whether you want to do that. But I find frankincense is such a soothing oil and it's, it's got amazing properties that I wanted to have it in there as well. You can also make your own nappy cream. This is so simple. It is coconut oil, lavender and tea tree. Now, the only reason you're looking at using a saucepan is if it's this time of year because coconut oil at the moment is solid so you actually want to melt it down so that you can mix the essential oils in there and then it will soften up um, and harden up after that and it's it's so easy and it's so effective again i would probably personally put in some frankincense because i think it's really nourishing to the skin and you just have that beside the change table so simple it's so cheap and you're not putting anything on your baby's skin that's being absorbed into their bloodstream and often causing a lot of the issues and to be honest, when we were, went into having our own um, baby wipes, we, we had no issues with nappy, rash or anything with Millie at all. It was phenomenal. It was so good. 
So then we can move on to what a lot of people like to do, which is make their own nourishing spa products. And again, heaps, this is, there are so many more options with the, the DIY for your spa experience. Um, I've actually made the ginger and lime scrub before at another one of the make and takes we did. It smells amazing and it just, we need to be exfoliating quite a lot to get the dead skin cells off our body to, and refresh the skin. And so if you can make it like a scrub, <laughs> seriously, will take you no more than 10 minutes, no, sorry, two minutes to make. It's literally, it's literally some sugar, some oil, essential oils. The longest part of that is actually mixing it together. So two minutes and you've got something done there. So a lot of these things are a lot simpler than you would actually imagine. And there's a whole range of different combinations that you can do. You can find these things. If you search um, DIY doTERRA online, you'll find a whole stack of different options. So there's other combinations that you can do with different ways that you want to support your body. So whether you want it invigorating, calming, stimulating, etc., you can choose different ingredients to go along with it. My basic go-tos are coconut oil and different types of sugar, depending on what way I want to exfoliate my body. Uh, a bigger grain is going to have a, a rougher exfoliation, so it can be a bit harder. So it just depend on the, the type of skin that is being used for as well. So this was another thing that we created at the Make and Take, and it is the simplest, most effective bath salts. And you, again, is... <laughs> It's going to take you five minutes tops to make these. Again, you should have most of these uh, ingredients at home. So you've got Epsom salts, sea salt, bicarb, and those ingredients are all actually very nourishing to the skin and going to support um, different things like some will help to detox, so help with um, adding extra magnesium and things into the, the system and the nutrients that our body needs and also calming us down. You can add, the, add any kind of combination that you want. So you could be doing lavender, you could be doing wild orange, you could be combining, you could do cedarwood, vetiver. Um, I probably wouldn't do, well, maybe you could do peppermint. When it's in the Epsom salts, it's very invigorating. Um, I don't really want to sit in a peppermint bath unless it's a really hot summer day. But you can choose these yourself and mix and match them and they're so cheap. These are great gifts to give to people as well. Then we look at hair. We've got hair <laughs> ways that we can support our hair. And the, there's a lot of oils that are going to be highly nourishing to our hair and our scalp. So things like rosemary, really good. Clary sage, lavender, tea tree. They're really good for our skin and our geranium as well um, to help stimulate hair growth, to help um, support and, and nourish our scalp as well. So when you're co uh, combining the essential oils with other ingredients that are known to have benefits, you've got these amazing um, recipes and tools that you can have available just to you within minutes. Like it, it's really amazing. And I've used the detangler on my daughter and we actually did um, lavender and water in there and that was enough to help with detangling her hair. It was phenomenal. So you can make your own homemade shampoo. There are ones that you can make um, for adults as well. So there's different ways that you can, can um, find what works for you. And again, we're not using any sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate or any kind of um, foaming type of additive in here. So it may not be as frothy as you're used to. It's all about what we have been trained to believe. So this again, we've got our Castile soap. You've got some vegetable glycerin and that'll actually help to coat the hair as well and support that and nourish it and trap some of the um, goodness in there. Lavender. So this is, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you know about anything about Johnson & Johnson's and now how they are promoting that natural is, you know, there's a difference between natural and science-based things and they'd rather have science-based than necessarily natural. They have been in a lot of hot water because of the ingredients that they are putting in their children's shampoo. So if you want to avoid the toxins that are absolutely atrocious <laughs> that are being put in a lot of the kids' shampoos, make your own. Get your kids involved with making your own one. Um, there's four ingredients in this. It's simple to make. Get your kids involved with it. You can add extra oils or whatever that you want to put in there and you've just got something ready to make, uh, ready to use straight away. 
Um, I know that some people don't like washing their hair every day and they do prefer to have a dry shampoo. I'm not someone who can get away with that. My hair just gets too greasy. It's always been super greasy. So you can do something as simple as arrowroot powder, a couple of essential oils. And if you have got darker hair, you may want to add some cocoa powder of the cow powder in there. And that just <laughs> makes it look like you haven't got, you know, gray roots coming through. Um, and that is going to help to uh, give you the effect of, or it absorbs up a lot of the oil that's in the, the, the hair. So it can allow you maybe having an extra day of not having to do your hair um, to get through. Um, so I know a lot of people do like having a dry shampoo. This is very cost effective, <laughs> like very, very easy to make. Now, hand sanitizer. So this time of year especially, but mostly when you've got kids or if you're um, getting going out and touching lots of things that where people are, you're going to be coming in contact with um, germs and, and stuff that's being left around. So really simple. This is aloe vera gel with On Guard in it. So this is an amazing protective blend that has got some of the most potent oils in there to help with supporting our immune system, but also getting rid of those threats that can come and um, wreak havoc on our body. So you can use this safely with kids as well. It's as simple as getting a small spritzer bottle, um, 100 ml, so they're about, I meant to have one here, a little bit smaller than the fractionated coconut oil bottle. And you can fill this up with the aloe vera gel, some water, use um, demineralized water or your boiled water from the kettle. and couple of uh, 20 drops of on guard it's as simple as that i also just make this up sometimes just with water and on guard and i've got something there that i can spritz my hand with and cover uh wipe over surfaces that isn't toxic that's what we want to try and cut out here this time of year people are often looking for an alternative to help with coughing and we kind of go through and i used to have a cupboard full of lozenges and all sorts of things <laughs> oils and honey. Lemon is great for soothing the throat and helping with that, um, that cough. You can use easy air on the chest, uh, but these oils are going to help to support the respiratory system and also help to soothe the throat that's often causing those coughing irritations. It's so easy, just make it in a little um, glass container, have a lid on it, then you can use it when needed. I would, like most things, just make sure you put in a clean spoon going in there each time. Safe to use for kids as well. Uh, these are amazing and so simple. Baking powder and water, I'm sorry, baking soda and water. And you make a little paste with these and put them into a, um, like a silicon tray, depending on what size you wanna make. You can just make them into balls yourself, like just rub them into balls like the, the photo. But what you wanna do is get Get it so that the baking soda with the water is, um, it stays together when you're, you're squishing it. And that means that you've got enough water. If it's too runny, you'll need to put some more baking soda in there. You just need to dry out those, those little discs or whatever shape. You can make these fun for the kids as well. Um, dry them out. So sometimes that might take you a couple of days just air drying them, or you can pop them into the oven on a, I think it's about 200 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes to totally dry them out and then store them in an airtight container. I have heard of people putting these in the freezer because it's the humidity that starts to break them down. And then you can have these available so that when you're popping into the shower, you have your essential oils next, next to them, put a couple of drops onto the actual disc, sit it in the side of your shower, and then as the steam is coming, it releases the essential oils and you can start to have the benefits. So if you want, and the good thing about not having the oils in those discs and putting them in at the time is one day you might be needing some peppermint to help, you know, and eucalyptus to help really open up the airways and get things going in there. Another day you might want some bergamot and wild orange to help you feel better. Um, like you can chop and change this yourself rather than being stuck with the same thing all the time. And that's what I love about DIY and using oils. You can add them to anything at any time and create your own aroma. Now, one of the big things that you can do with oils is actually make your own um, roller bottles, roller bottle blends. And I'm ready to make another one of my immune bombs. And I thought this is a good opportunity for me to show you how to do it. And I might even point this down a little bit so you can see a bit better. 
No, you can't see my face, but that's all right. Um, so I'm going to make a roller blend and I'm going to show you how easy that is. So this is the immune bomb and I'll put this down here so you can actually see what I'm doing. You get an empty roller bottle. I'll give you a tip on how you take out the lid, uh, the roller. Use your lid and that kind of pulls the roller out and you can just take it out so it's a lot easier. Now, I personally prefer getting the thick glass rollers because um, safety reasons and you also want to try and get ones that are going to protect the oils from the light. So any kind of um, frosted glass is good. That's why they're in amber bottles because it protects them from the light. So this really, really simple. We're doing three drops of each. This is a 10 mil bottle. So two, three. So that one is on guard and that helps to support the immune system. Actually, all of these do. So I don't, won't need to say that after each one. Now, oregano, just make sure that you don't get this on your hands um, because it is quite a hot oil. And if you do, just make sure you put some extra um, fractionated coconut oil in to dilute that down. That one is a really powerhouse um, essential oil. It's phenomenal for supporting your immune system and fighting off things that often we struggle with getting rid of in our system. So that was some frankincense. So frankincense helps the other oils to be more effective, but also is an immune supporting oil itself. Lemon, love lemon. I use this for cleaning all the time. I go through more lemon than anything else. Like it, it's, and I love that it's cheap. <laughs> it's so good. Um, tea tree, another great one. These are all really good for your immune system. But, and then we're gonna to top that up with fractionated coconut oil. And you can get, if you do struggle with doing this, you can get little pipettes that are um, able to suck the oil out and you can put them in rather than having to squeeze it this way. Um, just like that. Then we pop our lid in, put our lid on there, give it a shake, and you can normally see that the, um, the oils have mixed through. And I will then put my, I won't do this now, you don't need to watch me do this, but I'll get my little labels or I'll get like the label maker, um, depending what kind of blend that I'm making. And then I'll put the labels on the side here. And sometimes it's better to put the labels on before the oils go on because it can get a little bit oily on there and they don't stick. If that's the case, just give them a bit of a, a wipe over and make sure there's no residue there and they'll just stick on there. So. I've got roller blends for all sorts of things, for bruises, for bumps, for sleeping, for crazy children who need some help. <laughs> um, for me, <laughs> being when I'm feeling crazy as well. So there's all sorts of ways and that's so simple. And the best way that you can start to learn how to make roller blends and what oils to put together is have resources available. So things like the Modern Essentials, comes in an app for your phone, but it's also a book, The Essential Life, Google, and when you Google, please keep in mind that some people have different opinions on how many oils to put in a roller blend like this. So some people might have 40 drops in this and it kind of depends what oils they are. But, you know, an immune bomb with the, this amount of oils is a lot, lot higher dilution than one that um, has 40 or 50 drops in there. You're getting so many benefits from one drop of oil. You don't need to have a whole stack of um, oils in there for it to be effective. So those are some of the ideas for DIY. And now I'm going to talk for anyone who wants to know how they can actually get some oils into their life is how to purchase them. So this will, I'll go over this really quickly for you. So you've got the option with doTERRA of um, purchasing at wholesale prices. And that is either paying $35 and you can choose individual oils that you want to support yourself, or you can do the, the most common option is to go for a kit that is pre-selected. And these kits that I've got at the top here, so you've got the essential collection and the home essentials kit that are at the top, have a lot of the oils that you can utilize for DIY things. You can pretty much DIY anything. Um, rollables, there's a lot of stuff there to help with immunity for this time of year, so supporting your um, your system. Um, there's These are some of the foundational kits that if you've got them available, they're going to help to support you for multiple things that may come up, come up um, in, your, in your life. 
Um, so they tend to be the most popular. So you can get kits with doTERRA that have that $35 fee waived, so you don't have to pay the $35. Plus, these oils in the kits are actually cheaper than what you would pay wholesale for them. So it's a really good value, value option to go for. And there's going to be a kit that suits most budgets, whether that is um, paying the $35 and getting your own pre-made kit or some of these ones. And I highly recommend the Home Essentials kit because it's just a, a great one that comes with a diffuser as well. And the diffusers are 10% off this month as well. So the other option you've got once you've got your wholesale account with doTERRA is to utilise their loyalty rewards program. So with that... A lot of people will go, oh, I want all sorts of oils to help with all sorts of things. I want everything now. And I don't actually recommend doing that because it can be a little bit overwhelming. So you can utilize their loyalty rewards program, which gives you so many free things. Like it's just the smartest way to get your oils. You get your shipping back as points. So it's free shipping. And you can increase how much you get back in points um, over 12 months. You can get up to 30% back on any order that you purchase after you've been in the loyalty rewards program for over 12 months. I get so much free stuff every month. It is phenomenal. If you're not part of the loyalty rewards program and you've got oils and with doTERRA at the moment, I highly recommend you look into it because you're, you're seriously missing out on it. Totally flexible and you can cancel any time. Now, when you have got your wholesale membership with doTERRA, you've got the option of um, three ways to utilize the account. You can simply live with the oils, so introducing them to your everyday life. You might want to start doing some DIY things. You might utilize the loyalty rewards program, and you're just starting to incorporate it into your life. That's when you live doTERRA. I'm going to hazard a guess that as you start to use your oils, you will have um, opportunities to start sharing with other people, and you can start to get your oils reimbursed for free with commissions, um, and you can start to get a little bit of extra money coming in that's when you start sharing doTERRA. And if you are wanting to do something like me where you're building a business where you can supplement, replace, and even multiply your income, you can start building doTERRA. The best thing with doTERRA is that there is no pressure on any of these for anyone. You can do whatever suits you at any time, and these options are always there for you, and there's never any pressure. So I love that about doTERRA. What you actually get with your wholesale membership, which is the most important thing, is you're getting support with using your oils. So rather than just purchasing something um, in a retail store and not knowing how to use the products, you actually get um, combined into whoever's um, family tree that you enroll with. So with me, you'd be getting support groups on Facebook. We have training as well. Um, you also get help and resources with how to use your oils. And if you're wanting to do... Um, sharing doTERRA with people, you get business ideas as well. But please make sure you speak to the person who invited you to this webinar as well because they would be the one that would be supporting you and you should speak to them about how they'll support you. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, if you have got any questions at all, feel free to contact me at any time. I have got uh, multiple ways you can contact me. If you are interested in starting with doTERRA and um, you have come with my invitation, please head to either of these places and contact me. Or you can go to my doTERRA.com forward slash Vitalia and you can actually start with your oily journey there. Just click join and save and you'll be able to access the oils at wholesale prices if you know what it is that you want. Otherwise, I'd love to speak to you and work out what it is that's going to be the best way to support you and your family. So please reach out to me. I'd love to help you. And I want to thank you for your time today and I hope you've got some really great um, tips about how to use your oils DIY. Thanks. Bye.